All right, so in this video, we're gonna use the Thunder Client VS Code extension to execute some basic API calls. So the first API call we're gonna make is gonna to be to Coinbase. Uh, we're gonna query Coinbase and have it return all of the cryptocurrencies that it tracks. And then the second API call we're gonna make is to GitHub. And we're gonna start off by retrieving all of the Python-related repositories in GitHub. And then we'll apply some additional parameters so that we can sort the data. So to get started, open VS Code, and then go to the extensions marketplace. And then go ahead and do a search for Thunder Client. You can see it up the uh, it pops up as the first option right here. And if we take a look at it, it says it's a lightweight REST API client for VS Code. And right now it's got about a million downloads and five stars, so pretty popular. So now that it's installed, we can see that we have a new Thunder Client icon off to the left. So we'll go ahead and hit that. And then to start off, we can just hit new request. And then we'll minimize Thunder Client by hitting the icon again. Cool. So to get started, we're just going to be retrieving data from Coinbase. Uh, typically, when you're just retrieving data, you can use an HTTP, HTTP method of get. So if we ever wanted to change the method of our new request, we would just hit this drop down right here. We can enter the URL in the bar right there. If we wanted to apply parameters, we'd go to the query tab and enter them line by line. Alternatively, we can apply them in the, in the URL itself. Then we have our headers tabs where we can add actual HTTP headers to our request. We have some authentication methods uh, we have a body tab. Uh, the body tab is where you would enter data if you are sending data to the server to change or update something. And then the test tab, uh, we can create tests against the returned data from an API call. So to get started with Coinbase, we'll leave the method set to get, but for the URL, we'll set it to HTTPS API dot coinbase dot com forward slash v2 forward slash currencies and so this api call will, will already work like like it is uh, you can see when we hit send we get some return data but what i would like you to do is as a baseline configure a couple of headers so go to the headers tab configure the accept header and set it to application json and you can see it's a well-known option and then we're going to replace this user agent header with a header called content type and this will also be set to application forward slash json so basically with these two headers we're specifying that we want to send and receive json data so i want you to do that as a baseline so if we hit send we get the same thing um, but we can look at the results here uh, we can see the status code of the returned packet um, it's a 200 series, which means it was successful. We can see the size, and then it took about 138 milliseconds. Um, so we could look at the data just by scrolling down right here, but to make it easier on ourselves, let's open this in a JSON file. So hit these three lines to the top right, and then say open in code. And then now we can actually look at the data in a newly created JSON file. And in VS Code, we can tell it's a JSON file because of the little the yellow uh, curly braces in the tab. Um, so if we look at the actual data itself, um, JSON is just a, a standard for structuring data. You know, the data could be whatever you want it to be. In this case, it's the currencies in Coinbase, but um, at the end of the day, JSON is simply lists and dictionaries, and it looks just like Python. So it's relatively easy to read um, if you're familiar with Python. So looking at this data, we have at the root level, we've got a dictionary. We know that because we have this opening curly brace at the very top. And then within that dictionary, we have a data key. And this data key has a value of a list indicated by this opening bracket right there. And this list is a list of dictionaries. We can tell that because each comma separated item is just a dictionary. And each one of these dictionaries represents one of the cryptocurrencies that Coinbase is tracking. And then if you look within one of the dictionaries, you can see it's got three keys. ID, name, and min size. And it's basically the same thing all the way through 
the results. And so there you go. You you just made an API call using Thunder Client. It's it's really that simple for a basic GET request. So now that we've made the request, let's go ahead and save it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a collection, and then we're going to create a folder within that collection and put this request in that folder. So what we can do is go ahead and open the Thunder Client pane again, and then we're going to hit the Collections tab. And then you're going to hit the three lines and say New Collection. And then let's just call this My First Collection to keep it simple. Now that we have that collection created, we can go ahead and highlight it and then hit the three dots and then we'll say new folder. And we'll call this one Coinbase. Now if we go back to the activity tab, we can see the API call we just executed. If we highlight it, go to the three dots, we'll just say save to collection. And now we can rename it and then put it in that folder we just created. So let's go ahead and call it uh, get currencies. You can put whatever you want here. I normally just like to put the method and then whatever resource that I'm pulling information for. So right here, we'll just put get currencies. Uh, the URL will stay the same. And then the collection, we'll just hit the drop down, and then we'll see my first collection and then the folder within it. So select Coinbase and then hit submit. And now it says it's been saved successfully. So we can go ahead and close all of these tabs. And then hit the collections tab again and now you can see that new request is in our coinbase folder so now uh, let's go ahead and get to work creating that second api call to github uh, but before we do that let's go ahead and make a second folder so within our collection just highlight it hit the three dots we'll say new folder let's call this one github then highlight that folder three dots and then new request and for this one, we're going to be getting all of the Python repositories. So we'll say git Python repos, just like that. And then we can go ahead and minimize the Thunder Client pane. So now that we're in our new request, we'll start off with the method. Uh, we're just going to be re retrieving data so we can leave the method set to git. Um, but for the URL, we're going to set it to HTTPS api.github.com forward slash search, forward slash repositories. We're going to put question mark Q equals language colon Python. And so you might have noticed when we typed in that last part, the question mark Q equals language colon Python, ThunderClient actually automatically added a parameter for us. Whenever we want to apply parameters to an API call, we can apply them in this query tab in ThunderClient. Alternatively, we could just put them straight in the URL. So the convention is we put the main URL path and then a question mark. And then after the question mark, we can enter the parameter that we want to use. Now here, we're using a parameter and it's just called Q. Uh, I'm guessing that this is short for query, but I'm not sure we set it equal to language colon Python. So we're basically telling the GitHub API that we only want to pull repositories that have a language of Python. And for whatever reason, with this specific API, this Q parameter is actually required. So that's why we're typing it in now. But again, we could type that in down here and ThunderClient would automatically put it into the URL for us. Additionally, we can hit this check, uh, check mark to toggle that in our URL. So if we try and send this without that parameter, it's actually going to give us a message saying that the Q field is missing and it's required. So let's go ahead and hit that checkbox again to re-add it and then resend our request. Um, so we already got results, but like I said earlier, as a baseline, we want to configure a couple headers. So let's do the accept header, application JSON, content type, application JSON, again, just communicating to the API that we want to send and receive JSON data. Uh, JSON is the typical format for RESTful APIs, uh, but there are other options out there. And we don't have any authentication or anything else to configure, so we're, we're good to go for right now. Go ahead and execute that again. Uh, again, we can see our status code of 200, so that's successful. Um, let's open these results in a JSON file open in code. 
So taking a look at the data again, at the root level, we've got a dictionary indicated by this opening curly brace. Within this root dictionary, we've got, th we've got three keys, total count and complete results, and then items. Um, so one thing to note is that the value of the total count is something like eight and a half million. So it's saying that there are like eight and a half million Python repositories in GitHub, but it's not actually gonna show us the data for all of those repos within the results of this API call. So by default, most APIs are gonna use something called a page. So let's say that an API call returns, you know, in this case, 8 million results. Um, it's gonna separate that. It's gonna separate all those results into pages. And then it's only gonna return one page at a time. Typically, you're gonna see like 50 results per page, but in the case of GitHub, they are only returning 30 results per page. So additionally, they're only gonna return the first page. So what they're doing here is they're telling us that there are eight and a half million Python repos, but this items key, it's only gonna contain the data for the first 30 repositories. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but we can actually edit that behavior with uh, more parameters. So let's go ahead and close this JSON file. And back in our query tab, let's add a parameter called per page. And we'll set this equal to one. So we're gonna tell the API to only give us one result per page. Now we'll re-hit send. We'll open this in a JSON file and take a look at the results. So I didn't cover this before, but in our root level dictionary, the items key is a list indicated by the opening bracket. And then within that list, we have dictionaries where each dictionary represents a Python repo. And we can actually see that since we applied that per page parameter, if we minimize this first dictionary object, you can see we only have one pair of curly braces. So that kind of shows us that we indeed only got one result from this API call now that we applied that parameter. So now that we're only seeing one result at a time. Let's actually tell us to give it the, let's tell it to give us the most starred project first. So what we can do is we can apply another parameter called sort and set that equal to stars. And then by default, GitHub is gonna sort it in descending order, meaning it's gonna show us the most or the highest starred project first. So we'll resend that. We'll open it in a JSON file and take a look at the results. Again, if we minimize this first dictionary object, we can see that we only have one. So we indeed only got one result from this API call. And then if we look at the dictionary itself, we scroll down, I mean, we can see some basic stuff. Like we see the name, uh, YouTube-DL. We see the ID of the repo, some information on the owner, uh, blah, blah, blah. But if we keep going down, we actually see a, see, uh, see a key called stargazers count. And this tells us how many stars it has. So it's got about 111,000 stars. But now if we go back to our uh, parameters, so I said by default, it's gonna sort these in descending order, but if we wanna see the lowest start project, we can change the order to ascending. So what we can do is apply a new parameter called order and set this to ASC for ascending. And now if we hit send and open the data, we'll look at the result if we scroll down and look at the stargazers count, now we see it's zero. So this is one of the lowest starred um, Python projects. Additionally, you can see that there's a language key and it's set to Python, just going to show that we indeed are only pulling Python projects. Um, that's pretty much it. Again, when we apply parameters, we can do that manually in this query tab. And if we want to toggle them, uh, we can just toggle this button right here. And then if we, as a last step, let's go ahead and take a look at the URL itself. So earlier I talked about how we um, apply our first parameter after the main URL path. So we have the main URL, we have a question mark, and then we have our first parameter. Well, if we want to apply multiple parameters, we just separate them with ampersands. So you can see it has Q equals, equals language colon Python. But after that, they have the ampersand. And then we can say that we can see per page is equal to one another ampersand, and then sort equals stars, and order equals ascending. So 
we just separate those those additional parameters by ampersands and that's like the restful api uh, convention that you'll see so you can manually add those in the url but it's easier just to put it in the query parameters um, and then just remember as a baseline you normally want to configure these two these two http headers and this API didn't require authentication, but some do, so keep that in mind. You're going to have to look at, docu at the documentation for the API that you're hitting. Um, but that's really all there is to it, so I appreciate you watching the video, and I hope you have a good one.